Hi, my name is Sandy Baird, and we're here with What's Happening or What's Going On uh, with Pete Garitano, my guest, and we're going to talk a little bit about the current situation in our country with what they, what uh, some people call gun violence or guns. Um, and we're going to start with having some of the research that Pete has looked into about mass shootings elsewhere before we begin to discuss at least a little bit about what's going on in our culture that has caused things like Uvalde. Okay, Pete, how are you? You're just back from Costa Rica. Yes, I was. I Mass shootings just, there? <laughs> uh, I didn't read of any. Of course, there's no newspaper or local news where I am. Really? So I don't None? Know. Zero? Well, there may be, but I don't know where it is. Oh. Uh, there's just nobody. There, if nobody you cares? All they care about is soccer. Oh. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> if somebody got shot at a soccer match, then it would make the TV news. Uh -huh. but, um, okay, but sure. what's going on? You have done, uh, is this the only country, as they claim, that has such mass shootings? Uh, well, no, apparently there's been a, a number of studies done, and the United States is not even in the top 10 per capita of What does that mean, per capita? Well, so a country like Norway, which may only have, let's just throw a number out, 10 million people. The um, United States has 350 million, so if there's, you know, five mass shootings, a year in Norway and 30 in the United States, Norway has a, a higher rate mm -hmm. because of the you know, number of people in the country. And so there, on one study, the United States was 11th, and another study, they were like 50th. In Why doesn't shoot. this come out? Well, I mean, and we're told that it's peculiar to the United States, correct? Right. Um, gun violence is peculiar, but not mass shootings. And uh, we're, we're number two in the world in gun violence. Which means what, deaths, like things that happen by, in Chicago? and All homicides, right. all, all deaths by gun. Um, so What's the first? It, it, it's a, oh, you know, I can't remember now. It was, whoever was number one was way ahead of us though, but we're, I, I wanna say it's a real small country. Uh -huh. I would guess South Africa, but maybe not. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I can't. I can't recall right now who it is. But I mean, so, so yeah, it's it's a terrible thing. I mean, it's we're not. I don't think anybody would downplay uh, how terrible it is to have somebody go into a school or a church or um, or your bedroom or a department store or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and 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 kill a lot of people, but. In the United States, for instance, 50% of all gun deaths are suicides. Mm -hmm. So let's say there's 25, 30,000 people a year die from firearms. Half of them are suicides. Mm -hmm. So a very, very small portion are these um, are these uh, mass shootings. And so I think, I mean, the argument that's being put forth is if we get rid of assault rifles, and I think what Biden is proposing, anything with over 10 rounds or seven rounds in it. So a cartridge with more than so many rounds in it would be considered a assault, assault weapon, even though apparently most pistols nowadays have more than seven rounds in a cartridge. I mean, we're all uh, living the past thinking that a gun has like six bullets, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? But it's not true anymore. The cartridges all have apparently between. So are they considered then assault weapons, pistols? Well, I mean, that's, what the, actually, that's the argument that's going to be put forth is that anything more than seven rounds is going to be considered an assault rifle and what- Rifle? What about a pistol? Assault weapon. Yeah, okay. Well, no, pistol. So, yeah. I mean, and so what people that are, I mean, the gun, the pro-gun people are saying that this is going to eliminate 80% of the guns in the United States, which is of course impossible, that you can't, that's not gonna happen. So they're either gonna have to ease up what they're considering an assault rifle. I mean, I think at one point the AR-17 or whatever mm -hmm. was banned, right? But then it got yeah, overturned. Yeah, it was overturned because there was no significant difference. Right. It was only banned for about a year. Right. And during that year, there was no significant difference in the mass shootings. And so why ban them anymore? Well, and then and then the other... There was no significant increase. There was no significant increase, right. Or and decrease. The, the other component is that many of these have been done with a pistol because you yeah. can get 15 rounds and the one guy, apparently, that went in, there, I, I can't remember, shot 31 people somewhere he just had two pistols with a whole bunch of rounds in his pocket mm -hmm. so you take it out you put another one in it takes you five seconds it's not a really big deal apparently to you know pop a cartridge out put another one in there so getting rid of an assault rifle like you said may not solve the problem but i think some some 
uh, news organizations of people have touched on, I mean, what is the real problem? Why do we have all this gun violence? Yeah, before we go there, um, though, I mean, the argument is being made throughout the world that the United States is different because of the Second Amendment, okay? So the Second Amendment to the Constitution, and this has been upheld in the court, and the most recent case that I know of is Heller versus Washington, D.C., or Washington, D.C. versus Heller, in which the court said that people have the right to bear arms, and that was part of the Second Amendment. Do you think that's correct, that it's because of the Second Amendment that uh, Americans having the right to bear arms, is that why uh, there are so many mass shootings and deaths by guns, is because we are, that Second Amendment is very particular to the United States, in other words. You think if we amended the Second Amendment or got rid of it that we would end mass shootings? Well, at this point, no, because there's, there's so many guns in the in the country. I mean, how are you going to get rid of all the guns? Number one. Okay, but, you know, there are threats from the NRA is saying that Joe Biden and the Democrats are interested in confiscating our guns. Is that true? Who knows? But, I mean, I, it's hard to imagine that could happen because I think the, the, the Second Amendment defenders and the pro-gun, I'm not even going to say lobby anymore because I don't think the NRA has much power mm -hmm. since they went bankrupt. The people that own guns um, are not going to put up with it. that. They're not going to put up with that. I, I don't think there's a more powerful, a more, um, what's the right word? Militant. A militant, that's a good word, group of people than, than this, this group of people. And, and it may end up having some kind of divide, just like yep. our Roe versus Wade issue. Like it may end up being that right, it will. the northeastern states or the big cities will ban it, and then the southern states and other places like Montana won't. Because, I mean, the other, I mean, there's so many arguments. Like, the, you know, there are countries that have pretty much eliminated guns, like Japan, who have no gun violence. But then there's countries like Canada who have just as many guns per person as we do that have no gun violence, literally compared to us. I mean, it's it's like a fraction. So, so, so what's going on here? Uh, my my take. Although on it, Trudeau just did, he just no. He I know he wants to ban weapons, guns. even though they have like literally no problem. No, because he's a follower. Uh, well, what is okay? I just before we get into what what are the commonalities between all these shooters. Um, I really believe, I guess I believe in self-defense, and so I am a supporter of the Second Amendment. Um, and isn't that the reason that people want or that they do own guns is for self-defense and also a perception that if you ban guns with citizens, then the police and the government have all the guns, including the military. Nobody is going to stop the military from having assault weapons, especially if you're always in a war like the United States is persistently in wars. So you're always going to have assault weapons. It's just going to be that the state owns them all. Right, right? And, that, and that's basically the danger of leaning towards a totalitarian communist exactly. situation is, exactly. that, is that you look at the countries, some of the countries who have banned guns, they had the worst, strictest, most draconian lockdowns during exactly. COVID because people could not resist and say, no, you know, the heck with you, we're not yeah. going to do this. Right. Um, so, right, it, it, it really enables the government to be even more um, powerful and... It, and, uh, and that was one fisted. of the reasons for the American Revolution. I mean, there are a lot of reasons for the American Revolution, but one of the reasons that it was successful is that militias had the right to have guns, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they had guns for a lot of other reasons, I suppose, including to control slaves. However, one of the reasons was to resist empire. But right? a lot of the gun, uh, anti-gun advocates would say the Second Amendment Part of the Second Amendment also talks about a militia, yep. and the real reason was to have guns for a militia before there was a really organized army. So they were saying it's it's different now because we don't have or need a militia, which some people think we do, but because um, we have an ar a, a military. But the other argument in that is that in that last uh, important gun control case in Washington, the court said citizens have the right to bear arms. That's separate from militias. So there you go. Yeah, I, I don't, And that's been upheld. It's, I would say, there's zero chance that there'll be any really strong... There's not going to be any reform of no, guns. No, there won't be I any doubt. reform of guns. It's too deep in the American Constitution, right. for one thing. But, but I think, and many people think, that the real problem, and 
I've had this discussion with people who are who seriously think that the guns are the real problem is that we have a mental health problem in the United States and we have a lot of unhappy people and they're distressed about many things in the last two years of course mental health problems skyrocketed during COVID because we basically turned our country into a, a giant like concentration camp of sorts where people are isolated and we know isolation is bad. I mean, that's what we do to people in prison to break them. So we had people who may have already been on the edge that went over the edge because they needed to be with other people and talk to other people and they needed work and they needed friends and all these things that were deprived because of and let's not say it was because of COVID, it was because of the lockdowns. Right. Because the, the, the press constantly wants to say COVID did this, COVID did that. No, COVID didn't do it. The lockdowns did it. And the government. Okay? And the government was the it. ones who, who enacted the lockdowns. Countries that didn't have lockdowns didn't have these problems. Their economy's doing much better than ours. And states that didn't adhere as long as other states are also doing much better. But so we're neglecting something else, okay? And you brought this to my attention, actually, although I, I kind of had also thought about it was that there is a connection with gender isn't there oh yeah it's, and race in a way i don't know of any do you know of i don't know of many black people who have committed mass violence with guns against schools i might be wrong but what is the typical profile of a person who goes into a school and shoots up a school well i hate to say at this point that it's a white male but it's why because you're a white male well, because the white males are, are the right. uh, are being uh, stomped right. on right now, right. right? So that's the worst thing you can be. Now, I consider myself not really a white male, but, mm -hmm. I, um, but yeah, it's um, it is a white male. But maybe maybe that's part poor of poor too, right? Poor, um, yeah. But me, and and in most cases, someone who hasn't grown up with a father. Okay, you know? Go into that a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, they've done. And how did you come to this conclusion? You any? well, there's been. There's been studies done on this, mm -hmm. and, and I mean, I think I want to say that right now, maybe t 10 or 20 percent of kids anyway don't grow up with a with a with a the nuclear family that they used to. Probably at least 20 percent. So the fact that these kids that act out many times have not had a father, 75 percent, it's still a big increase. Um, I mean, and the other the other thing that's been pointed out, but I think this is all just part of a mental health issue is that a lot of these kids on, are on very powerful um, antidepressants, antipsychotic drugs. You know, they've been- they prescribed. Right, they're prescribed. They've been diagnosed. They go to a, a medical doctor, a, a psychiatrist, and they get these drugs prescribed to them. And, and the, medical, the medical community has changed in that um, a lot of people would argue that they're very quick to prescribe things and that is their kind of we did this that's the solution where i think you know counseling is probably what is being what is lacking in a lot of these cases these you know kids that are troubled people that are troubled need to talk to somebody mm -hmm. i mean if anybody's ever had a a marriage issue or any kind of issue and gone to a counselor you sometimes need to talk to somebody that is kind of neutral and and air and and there, this isn't available there's the the the, the Medical, um, mental health community is completely overwhelmed and understaffed right now. It's, you know, so you read a lot of these things that the kids, they went in, but then that was it. You know, they got, they, they, they got the prescription and then they were off. And so, you know, there's, there's so many factors, I think, but the last two years didn't help. So, I, I, you know, it's one of these things where you say, okay, the, 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 the um, symptom is the mass shootings, but what is the disease, you know? But, that, the, but nobody does that. Okay, no, I, 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 Because we can't, we can't point our fingers at the pharmaceutical community or the medical community or say that the nuclear family that we need to get back to. Can't do that. Oh, you can't say, geez, you know, dads have to hang around and, mm -hmm. and people should have a mother and a father because that's not a, I would hate to say in vogue right now, but it's kind of not, it's not currently, it's, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a whole different climate out there. Things are being pushed that are really antithetical to anything that's happened in the last thousand years as far as family civilization, structure. No, yeah. Civilization. Civilization, yeah. right. And I think that a lot of, and many people think, including me, that it's it's just wrong, that that's what's causing this, you know, a lot of this stress, too much strife, um, too many choices. That's another thing people have pointed out. Like you used to have, you know, this, this, and this, and now for everything, there's a million choices and you have the- No, but I don't agree with that. Yeah. 
Well, think well, yeah. about it. If you're a young white male, yeah, um, poor, what what choices do they have? I mean, they could be they could tr be trying to get decent jobs. They could be trying to go to school and college like we did. Um, however, uh, at least you know many of those men are really without choices. They don't have money. They they haven't been particularly ambitious in a lot of ways because they don't see that there are a lot of choices or a lot of ways up right now. Um, and that was not the case when we were younger. For, and they don't, they don't think they're ever going to have any money to get out of the cellar of their mother's house and to have a family of their own. Well, I don't mean employment choices. I think I'm, I mean we're, I hate to go into the woke thing. Go ahead. But you didn't used to have to decide if you were a man or a woman when you were six, eight, nine, ten years old. Mm -hmm. and you don't have to now, but Well, it's, but it's, it's something that's introduced yeah. to say, well, maybe you're not this, maybe you're not that. And so, and that's a very confusing thing and could be a very disturbing thing, you know. Okay, okay, okay. So, but I want to get back to the, the idea of males and male role in society. It's always been screwed up for men and women because of that in traditional society in any in this, I'm a divorce lawyer right so I know and I've known for years that the biggest problem I think in the fundamentals of our society pretty much are broken families you know uh, and they're not broken for no reason you know um, I think that there's tons of violence in families I think that men are usually the perpetrator of violence I think that many men leave families or women ask them to leave and they don't support their families financially. They're not good fathers once that's over um, and they leave and often they leave the mother alone. To t In fact, I see that every day, that mothers are left alone to raise children, which is impossible for a mother to do. It's just impossible to raise, especially if you have a lot of kids, by yourself with no financial support. I mean, Bill Clinton ended even welfare payments to those mothers, right? right? Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean... You, so I, you have these broken families. Men are not assuming what a male should do, which is the support of women and children, the protector of women and children. Instead, they leave, leaving the mother pretty much in charge of the whole family, and they're not able to do it. You know that, Pete, as well as I do. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, I mean not having two parents is a bad thing because... Or an extended family. I mean, right now, somebody has to work. So then right. you, what is that called? You end up being a helicopter kid where you come home and there's nobody there and you just open the door and you go in, something like that. But you just, you brought up another thing which is very important to this whole debate. We are, this discussion is that we are a culture of violence. We glorify violence right. in this country. How? The military. Yes, I mean, the military, I mean, there's, right. there's no more glory, glorification of, that can be any more disturbing to me than the way we treat um, people who mass murder people that we don't Abroad. know. Yeah, that we don't know. So, so, you know, how is that not worse than anything that any of these people are doing? We give them permission and then when they come back, you know, in many cases, they get medals. True. So right. it, it's a sad thing and we are the most militant, um, let's put it this way, we've, we've, in the last, since World War II, we've easily caused the death of more people worldwide with violence than any other country. There's not even a close second to, to, to the U.S. military. One of the historians uh, estimates 30 to 50 million people, either by starvation or just right. direct bombing. So, so, and you know, and no matter what, no matter how wrong we are, we're never, nobody's ever um, taken the task for it, you know. No, it's considered okay. It's okay. So there's this. I had uh, there's, an argument about this the other yeah, day. But there's, go ahead. There's this, uh, there's this two. That's not two faced. There's this duplicit kind of thing where yeah, it's okay if you work for the government. It's okay to do all these things and then go over and kill people. But you know because that's what your job is. As a man. As a man. Um, but then if you come back and and I think uh, some of these people are ex-military that have committed these mass slang. I mean, they have PSTD, sure. I mean, it's not a healthy thing to, to be part of this either. I mean, some, some people can probably deal with it, but a lot of people um, struggle greatly with, with their task that they've taken on as far as, you know, being in the military and doing that. Well, I had this discussion with a, um, a woman over the weekend about this, because I don't think, first of all, the production of assault weapons, 
I mean, you could outlaw, I suppose, the production of assault weapons, but not when your country's at war. The production of assault weapons is going to continue whether or not citizens are disarmed. The production of those weapons are going to continue as long as you're training young men to go to war. Isn't that correct? So to be really... Um, and we know there's weapons get in the hands of other people. I mean, yeah. look what happened. All of our weapons in Iraq, probably at this point, the Taliban have. Well, how about in the, the, with Afghanistan, too? Yeah, in Afghanistan. And, and there's a good chance all the ones we send to Ukraine, half of those will end up in the Russia, yes. hands of the Russians. Yeah, I've heard that they already are. But the arms dealers don't care as long as they get paid. But it's not just the arms dealers. They're heinous enough. But it's also the question of what the government wants and what the government doesn't want. The government's through both Republican and Democrat, have always been pro-war, haven't oh, yeah. they? With, has there ever been an exception to that? Well, they don't, they don't actually get to, to vote on it anymore. Right. That, that, there used to be a, a, there is a law, but nobody pays attention to it anymore, right? There is a, that Congress has no, to approve. Con yes, right. No, in the Constitution, the, the only body that was supposed to declare war was Congress. The last time, do you know when the last time? It that was a day, long time ago. It was 1941. No, I would say World War II because yeah. I know Korea, 1941. Vietnam. 1941. So, it's and that's all okay. So, that's my contention, and people argue with me about that. They say, What are you talking about? Well, let's ban assault weapons. Never on earth will assault weapons be banned until you stop war, right? Well, somebody had the suggestion you just charge a thousand dollars per bullet, <laughs> yeah, but that won't happen either. I mean, I mean, the connection with okay, so but you're on to something because every day a young man is taught one of his roles is to go abroad and kill other people. Sure. We train killers every day. For the military. Sure. But okay. they're still trained killers. The yeah. people that are in the National Guard here are trained killers. They don't want to do it necessarily. But, but they're they still do trained it. to but kill people. Exactly. Yeah. And I think all mo that young men are trained in that way. You'll notice that in these uh, mass shootings, how many females have been involved? I don't remember a single one. No. No, I'm not. And, and women... Do they not, young girls, do they not receive the same training as men? I don't really know. But for some reason, this is a gender-specific crime, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it is a gender-specific crime. Um, but they're also very small. you still believe in small, gender. Well, there's also a very, very small portion of women. There's more than ever in the military, but there's still a very small portion in the military. Certainly a fighting force. And do they do go... 1%, 5%, I think they... Yeah, because they can't stand the military very much because yeah. of what they're ordered to do, I suppose. And also because they get... I mean, there are huge cases in the military of sexual harassment, right? So if you go back to the no father thing, then oh, are right. women way less likely to grow up without a mother than men are likely to grow up without a father? In other words... No, wait, mothers stay around. Right. So I mean, I mean, they can't do it. Maybe we've solved the problem. We got to get men to stay around. In peace. Well, yeah. Okay, look at I have seen too many men. Well, yeah, you that don't want to have a, abusive, women. right? Abusive right, right, a husband, right. right? Exactly. Right. Um, but I think something else is also going on with men. I think that men have to be reminded, no matter who they're sleeping with, no matter what they're doing, that males, sh I think, and this is a value judgment, should be on earth to protect women and kids, and that's the male role. Are they being trained to do that? No. No. I don't think so. They're no. trained to go to war. Well, well, that's the other thing that has been um, right. What? Male, the male's role versus the female's role has always been completely different. And, and males are also glorified for spreading their seed. And women, no. Are they? They sure. shouldn't be if that's the case. You know? Well, no. They, of course, you, if, if a guy is promiscuous, nobody says calls them, you know, other guys don't say bad things about them. They think that's great. Yeah, right. And the opposite with a woman. No, a woman is considered a slut. Well, that's what I said, the opposite. Yeah, They're right, not, it's not right, considered right. a good thing. Right, right. So that, that's, that, there's, a, you know, there's another thing where it's, it's uh, creating men who think it's okay to have Father a baby leave, have a baby leave, right. and then you have, and then there's also... And you have to chase them around for child support. Sports stars who are f famously have done this, and there was somebody in the NBA who had like seven kids by seven women and what wasn't p paying child support. I, can, I remember the guy's name, but I won't mention it. Guess who else I got, I think I could take into court for child support, I believe, was Hunter Biden, but I'd have to check that out, <laughs> but I think so. <laughs> But he paid, I suppose, in the end. Yeah. Look, at I, um, we don't have a whole lot of time, but yeah. this is something that I would really like to explore a lot because right now, as, you, as I said, I'm a divorce lawyer, lawyer, and I am shocked at the number of women 
with, pile, with a lot of kids who are simply ignored and neglected by our society. And that number is really up in our community because I think many women who are abandoned are new Americans. They don't have real access to the court um, because the courts, I mean, nobody can understand what's happening in the courts, even white Americans or black Americans, and certainly new Americans with their difficulties in language cannot, and they cannot access the courts. So we have all these mothers. We're talking about raising the future generation. All these single mothers with all these kids that have been totally neglected by our lovely progressive state. You know, it's, it's very upsetting. So how do you get fathers to stay, though? Uh, you tell me you're a father. How did you stay? Why did you stay? Tell me. I thought my, it, was, my the, I thought it was the right thing to do. Yeah, my husband did too. Um, times are tough in every marriage, and then, and then, but you say, you know, I've got to, I've got to take care of my kids, and then after and the wife, a and lot. wife, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I thought it was the right thing to do because what was it, because I was raised a Catholic. I don't know. Could be. It could I don't be. know. I, mean, I don't know that. Religion may have I mean, some role in it, but how, you know, I I don't know. It would be interesting to see if. Um, if it's more prevalent in certain communities and other communities, you know, like once again, the South is typically more church going than the North right now, I would say. Mm -hmm. So is there more of a problem with fathers leaving there or more of a problem in the North? It would be an interesting thing to see. That would be, but that's not the kind of study that's being done. That's what I'm no. saying. And the mothers that are left behind um, are really suffering. Yeah. And. I guess that has been the situation for a very long time, I, I would think, well, but I think it's much worse at this point and, because uh, white men are being, I don't know, I don't know what's happening. Well, where I, I go to Costa Rica in, the, in six months a year and the problem is just as bad if not worse down there and, and traditionally Hispanic cultures are not good with this either because it's like a macho, yeah. macho kind of male and I know numerous guys who uh, have have kids that I don't think they ever see their kids. The Do only difference care? is there the country takes care of the kids. Yeah, yeah, um, right. So which you, is not you, true here. Which which was the argument is that you have babies to have an income, yeah. and that's what people say down there. Because let's say the the country of Costa Rica gives you a hundred dollars a month per child. So you have a couple kids. That's kind of your job taking care of the kids. But at least they have a mom taking care of the kids. So. Um, the dad's gone, but... Uh. Okay, we'll end this on, uh, I, I, because this is a really important topic. Um, we used to have a, 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 the minimum welfare payments that would go to single poor parents with right. children. The Bill Clinton cut all that out. In other words, he said all that work that's done by that single parent, usually the mother with kids, we're not going to pay for anymore. Right. And they're on their own. That is, to me, really, really disgusting. Well, I mean... The problem with a lot of these, which I think you would call nanny state programs, is the fraud. And so, yeah. So, so it costs probably twice as much as it should because there's so much fraud, you know. And but it, there's not very much fraud on behalf of those mothers, and try to remember that. Well, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It was a while. Well, I do. A long time ago, you yeah. know, and and all that's been cut out of some, I don't know. They go to work at some crappy job, so they have to leave their kids in some. Anyway, it's a very bad situation, and I would say that those mothers have to be supported financially when yeah. the men, when the husbands won't or the fathers yeah. won't. Okay, so I guess that's it for this week, right? Sure, we can wrap it up, and uh, we'll reconvene. And I just wanted to say one more thing about it's, it was D-Day yesterday, yes. correct? When the United States, Canada, and Britain, I guess, rolled into Germany and pushed the Nazis out of France, right? Right. I want to remind people that at the same time they met in Berlin with the Soviet armies and they congratulated each other and they made peace. So and we should time. do the same with Russia yeah. now. Okay? That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. All right. So we'll see you next month. All right. Thank you. Sounds Thank you. good.